Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly tech tip. Mitch here. So last week, Brett gave us a really great high level overview of the different ways in which SET can be configured in a multi-site configuration. So what I thought we would do this week is go a little more in depth on SET object multi-site in particular. because It's really well fleshed out, it's really well supported, and it's really cool. So let's jump in. So Ceph Object Multisite allows anyone to build their own cloud that can be accessed from all over the world by putting new clusters online in different geographic locations to serve out clients in that area. The data that is then being generated by clients will be written to their respective cluster through a Rados gateway endpoint. That data then replicates with all other sites within the zone group to become eventually consistent. So I just want to very quickly talk about the two different types of multisite that Brett talked about in his last video, synchronous and asynchronous. So Ceph by its own design is synchronous replication. And so that means from a client's level, uh, write is not acknowledged until all replication copies are written into the cluster. So for example, if you have a two-way replication cluster with your failure domain at the host level and your client writes into the cluster, that client does not receive acknowledgement until that second copy has been written to any other node than where the primary write happened. So you can very quickly see where this would become unusable at the multi-site level, especially when the clusters span vast geographic distances to one another. So this is where asynchronous replication is used. This allows each cluster in the multi-site to become eventually consistent with each other. So first I want to get through some nomenclature that you should be aware of about Ceph multi-site before we continue. So from the top down we have realm, zone group, and zones. And I'm going to explain all of those right now. So Realm represents a globally unique namespace and represents the highest level of the Ceph multi-site cluster. Each Realm can then contain either one or multiple zone groups and multiple zones. So next we have zone groups. These used to be called regions and they're essentially made to define one or more multiple geographic areas. So next we have zones. These are the lowest level of the Ceph multi-site configuration and they're represented by one or more object gateways underneath one single Ceph cluster. All right, so I'm going to go through a very straightforward multi-site Ceph cluster configuration. Let's say you have a cluster in data center A and cluster in data center B, and you want these to be able to replicate to one another, and you also want to be able to have one failure and still serve out clients uh, for your multi-site configuration. So Ceph cluster in data center A will be located in zone 1. Ceph cluster in data center B will be located in zone 2. Next, we choose which cluster will be our master zone cluster. This cluster is used to create users and buckets for the entire zone group. Now, both clusters will make up zone group 1. In this configuration, there is only one zone group, and zone group 1 will be the master zone group. Next, this zone group must be part of a realm. We would then choose a realm name for our multi-site. This is a global namespace for the entire multi-site. The realm itself works on periods. Each period of time represents the state of the zone group and zone configuration at a specific time. Each time there is a change to the configuration, the period must be updated and committed. Once these two sites are configured with all this information, we will create a user that will be used to create the synchronization link between the two clusters. If you take a look at the dashboard of each cluster, you will see that the RGW pool names will contain the name of the zone the respective cluster belongs to. As you can see, the name of the zones are called yin and yan. So this configuration will actually replicate all data between each zone and can act as a failover for each other in the case of an outage. The only thing to note here is that your master zone, if that is the, the cluster that drops out for example, you will not be able to create users and buckets until that zone comes back up or you promote the secondary zone to the master zone. So I consider this probably one of the simplest configurations for Ceph multi-site as there's so many finely granular ways to tune your multi-site Ceph clusters. For example, you can select only certain buckets to replicate to the secondary cluster or you can set only one-way syncing for uh, certain buckets or certain users. It's very, very finely granular. So this is essentially just a failover type disaster recovery scenario where each side can serve clients to the cluster. So it's really cool. All right, so I haven't done a fun fact in a while, and this one's probably pretty obvious if you're paying attention, but fun fact is when I was configuring our two Ceph clusters in a multi-site configuration, and I was naming them, uh, it was supposed to be Yang, not Yan. Uh, I made a spelling error and decided not to correct it. So forever now, our clusters will be called Yin and Yan. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found some of the uh, more deeper dive into Ceph multi-site interesting. I'm gonna leave some links in the description below if you wanna read further into the different ways in which you can configure this. As I said, there's so many different ways to uh, set this up uh, for your own specific environment. So if you have any ideas, leave it in the comment section below and we'll definitely check it out. We'll see you on the next one.